welcome everyone. Thanks for taking time out from your busy day and Zoom fatigue to do another Zoom. Um, I will try to keep this conversational. Um, as interim co-director of sustainability at UNC Asheville, I'm also the coordinator of the McCullough Fellow Program. So I'm going to be giving an information session about this program, and I'm encouraging um, faculty to get involved, students to get involved, and we're seeking community partner organizations. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and I welcome questions at any time. You can interrupt me for to ask a question or put them in the chat. And if someone would read them out from the chat, that would also be great. Maybe Ashley. So the McCullough Fellowship Program at UNC Asheville has been around for about five years, and we are recruiting for our 2021 fellows. It's a multi-step process, so um, students should start early thinking about their research question and possible project. So in today's session, I'm going to go over these topics, um, talk about eligibility, the requirements, how much money you get, um, the option for course credit, and our application timeline. So the McCullough Institute was established through a generous donation from the McCullough family about, about six years ago. Um, and uh, the focal areas of this institute are land use and conservation, urban planning, sustainable agriculture, and resilience and environmental sustainability. So if you do get involved, you need to show a clear linkage between your project and one of these four focal areas. Um, we're very grateful to the McCullough family for providing this funding for a very unique opportunity, something that usually students only get to do in graduate school. Um, part of being a fellow means that you also get professional and academic development, and it's a opportunity to bridge UNC Asheville with a wider community through our community partner program. So generally the fellowships, um, uh, there's only one set of fellows per year, about four to five students, and they're selected in, the applications due March 1st, then they're selected, and then they start the fellowship lightly in the spring, just getting ready, but really the, the work takes place in the summer. So you're expected to give 20 hours a week, during the summer working on your applied research project. And there are program dates where we go and visit each of the community partner organizations, either in person or virtually. Um, so these are some photos showing past program days. And those are determined based on the fellow, the whoever the partner organizations are that year. Um, and there is a fall, a small fall expectation, about four hours a week, where you're writing up your results from your research project, and then you present at the undergrad research symposium in the fall, and then we have a celebration and you get a certificate. So who's eligible? The students must be currently enrolled and have a minimum GPA of 3.0, and they have to be enrolled for fall of 2021, so no current seniors can apply. Um, but juniors could apply, and even somebody who's graduating in December of 2021, you're still eligible. You just have to complete the fall portion of the program. So um, fellows do get paid, as do the, um, the fellows get paid as a kind of a student employee. The community partners get a stipend and the faculty advisors get a stipend. So the fellows report their hours through OnePort. Um, they have bi-weekly meetings with their faculty advisor. So for the faculty advisors, it's expected that you will be available. You'll be available for these bi-weekly meetings or weekly, um, particularly in the summer. So the students always checking in with you, making sure the research is going okay. If the research needs to be modified, then um, you figure that out. And as you work on data analysis and writing up your final paper, the faculty advisor is helping with that. Also meeting with the project partners. So um, this, is a, this is something that takes students a little time is finding the right community partner and meeting a need of the community partner. So if you say you're just interested in food generally, then maybe you'll work with Bountiful Cities. Um, and I can help you find um, community partners. And Corey Anderson is on this call too. And I think she's in the key center and might be able to help you as well. Um, and I'll just say that you could sort of dovetail this with being a community engaged scholar. That's a separate conversation. Um, so you're supposed to meet a need of a community partner. Um, so you might ask them, go to Bountiful Cities and say, what are, what are some projects that you, like, what are some questions you would like me to answer through my research project? 
So you're meeting with your partner, uh, a person who's your contact person at, at the partner organization. And then we have sessions with the other fellows. So it's a cohort and we really get to know each other and do some um, professional development together. Um, there is a fall one credit McCullough Fellowship course, which I'm teaching right now with our four 2020 fellows. And that only meets once a week. Um, and it's just a good way for us to check in every week and work on your final papers <laughs> and presentation. Um, and then, at, like I said, 20 hours during the summer and four hours during the fall. There's a midterm update that you submit. And you have the final presentation, which is both at the undergrad research symposium and there's a luncheon with the McCullough board and the faculty folks and the community partner organizations. Okay. So um, there are some other options in the summer. You could be, you could make your um, project into a summer class if you want, but that's totally optional. Um, if you're in a department that requires an internship or a research project, you could count your McCullough Fellowship um, project as that with approval of your department. Um, you can also pursue some additional fundings. It is not recommended that you have a summer job. Definitely not a full-time summer job. You could have a part-time summer job, but that is, a, that is um, not a way to lead to success if you overcommit yourself. And you're strongly encouraged slash required to um, present your findings at the um, fall research symposium. All right, funding. So you're, the fellows are paid at $10 an hour for up to 308 hours. So it could you could, throughout the whole course of the program, get over $3,000. The partner honorarium is $800. The faculty advisor honorarium is $800. And there's a small um, budget that you would have to figure out if you need it, up to $500 for materials. Or it could be travel to a conference, including a virtual conference. So the registration fee for that. And I could also work with you on trying to figure that out. So how are you gonna choose a project? Um, for faculty, if, if faculty already have a project in mind, then you should reach out to a student um, who seems you know, keen and appropriate to see if the student wants to apply. For students, if you have a faculty person in mind that you, you like their class, you like the research they're already doing, you should reach out to the faculty and see if they're available in the summer and they wanna do a project together. Again, should meet one of these focal areas, land use and conservation, urban planning, sustainable agriculture, or resilience and environmental sustainability, broadly defined. So there's lots that fits into that. Could be um, climate resilience. It could be energy issues. Um, it could be food again, but there's a agriculture category too. So something that you're passionate about, that you want to research, that you're curious about, but you can go to the community partner and the faculty advisor to help you and give you some directions. If you're just like, I like the environment, <laughs> then you need to narrow down and you can get some help on that. Okay, it must be applied research. Um, it can't be theoretical research and it cannot be an internship. You're not just volunteering somewhere. You have to have a research question. What is the question you're trying to answer? And it has to be applied. Um, toward a specific need. Um, so you're addressing a practical problem. You're not just acquiring knowledge for knowledge sake. And I can help you with that, but your faculty advisor can too. Um, <clears throat> yeah, mostly the faculty advisor. So this is hard. It's hard to write the research proposal and come up with a good research question, but there's lots of options. Just give yourself the time. So you need to make sure that there's some academic research involved. Creative projects are welcome. We've had art projects in the past. So this is definitely not limited to environmental studies or specifically environmental things. We, we appreciate interdisciplinarity um, in a kind of a outside the box way of thinking. So how are you gonna find your partner organization? It has to be some um, nonprofit organization or business or government agency in the broader Asheville area, I would say Buncombe County. Um, and we could talk about if you want it to be outside Buncombe, that's possible. But in the in our region, it must be, um, you cannot go home to Raleigh over the summer and do something in Raleigh. That is not allowed. It has to be in the Asheville area. There is, the Chamber of Commerce has a list of nonprofit organizations. Um, so that is a possibility. And I'm gonna give you some ideas in a couple slides. All right, so at the partner organization, somebody has to serve as your project advisor. 
So you could reach out to the organization broadly, but you're going to find out who responds to your email, if they're excited about your project, and they're willing to meet with you throughout the summer. So they need to be available. And you want someone who's responsive, who's going to respond to your emails and your phone calls. Um, the partners are invited to um, attend a, sort of a kickoff luncheon in the spring and then our closing ceremony in, in December. They might provide you with space. I mean, it's COVID, so um, not really. But, but post-COVID, um, maybe you go to the office, but maybe not. So there's no real expectations. The only thing they're providing you with really is guidance. Okay, here are our past partners. So again, this has been going for five years. We've had lots of really interesting partner organizations from government agencies like the Fish and Wildlife Service um, to nonprofits like Southern Appalachian Highlands Conservancy to businesses like Duke Energy and also Living Roofs. Right now we have a fellow who's working on green roofs. Um, so you can see there's so much potential um, anything like remotely environmental, but also social justice. Um, okay. And also these are our past fellows. In the middle are our current fellows, socially distanced. Um, and then you can see some of the other, these are the um, five cohorts we've had so far. And at the end, when I stop sharing, I'm going to show you the website with our past fellows. So you can see one strategy is you cannot have a faculty advisor who just had a fellow this year. Um, so that's Carrie Tomberlin, Andrew Laughlin, um, let me get this right, Kathy Whitlock and, okay, Jeff Shields. So those four cannot be repeated um, this year. But somebody who's had a fellow in the past, maybe three years ago, it's okay to nominate another fellow. Same with organizations. All those slides I just showed, um, oh, I'm not gonna show them again. It's okay to have another fellow, just not two years in a row. All right, here are some potential partners that have not had a fellow that I'm targeting. So for example, well, Jonathan Horton is on this call. North Carolina Forest Service, that would be a great partner. Look at some carbon sequestration potential of campus forests and maybe other forests. Blue Ridge Audubon Society, I'm trying to get a student to apply to look at bird friendly campuses. Land of Sky is a regional council here in Asheville. They do things like climate resilience planning, also waste management, solid waste management if you're into recycling or composting. Um, if you're into gardening, so true seed, organic grower school. And if you're into urban planning or design, the Greenbelt Alliance, which does certification of um, eco-friendly homes and businesses. Um, and there's other, lots of other, but these are some ideas. And if you need other ideas, meet with me separately. You can set up a meeting with me. Okay, so what's the application um, that, the application includes a project summary. So you need to summarize what you're gonna be doing. Uh, the, here's, here are the steps of the proposal. I will email an application form to all the students who attend an info session. So at the end of this presentation, I have the info session dates. The deadline is gonna be March 1st. So here you're basically writing a research proposal with the normal things, a summary or an abstract, a description of the project, how is it relevant to one of the four focal areas? How does it relate to your personal goals, your professional goals? And then there's a form that your partner organization has to fill out, which um, I'll provide to them as a Google form. And then your faculty advisor support letter, which I'll also provide. But you can see that this takes time. You cannot start the application. I do not recommend that you start the application in February. I recommend you start now, which is why I'm doing this session uh, because you can work on it over the break in December and January. It takes time. You know that people don't respond to email right away. So if you're reaching out to a few different community partners, maybe that you don't hear from one or two of them, or it takes a few weeks. All right, here's an example of a project summary. It just happens to be the one I wrote <laughs> back in um, 2015 um, when I had a fellow. And so we were working, it's, it's basically an abstract. So we were working on, um, you can see we have uh, resiliency, we were looking at food security issues, um, and it mentions what the partner organization is, Groundswell International, um, and the faculty mentor's name. So for the students writing this, you want to make sure you, you state who your community partner is in the abstract, in the summary, and who your faculty advisor is. Um, do, oh, okay. Got a new, got a, welcome, another member. 
um, here. So let's see, make sure you include information on what you will be doing, with whom you're working, and how the project addresses a regional need or practical problem. How is it applied research? Okay, then the description. So this is the main body of the proposal, which is a thousand words. What do you hope to accomplish? How was the project developed? So this is where you can say, I started way back in November, contacting my community or organization, working with a faculty advisor, developed my question over two months, and um, it's all great. What's some background information? So you are expected to cite some literature and say, what is the background information about the project? And like, what's the statement of the problem? What issue are you addressing? Has other, have other people researched the same topic and what did they find, right? Um, have you had any involvement with a community organization before? Maybe you're volunteering with an organization already and then you're continuing on with your volunteering by doing an applied research project. How does a project address the partner's needs or problems? And definitely include um, some a work cited with your sources. Okay, and then there, you're gonna write a little bit about the relevance to your professional and academic goals. How will this McCullough Fellowship help you achieve your professional goals um, and your academic goals? And then how does it relate to one of the four focal areas? How will, how will your applied research help solve an environmental or sustainability related challenge? Or at least get us further along the way. Okay, you're gonna do a budget. And the total budget cannot exceed $5,200. That's all that itemized stuff I showed you before. Um, you have to designate your faculty advisor. Um, you have to try to anticipate any expenses you're gonna incur. Um, and I'm gonna show you an example. Here we go. So this is like what I showed you already, but you're, when you do your actual budget, you're gonna list your partner organization. So this was SAHC. You're gonna put your faculty advisor and what department they're from. Another note is that we try to mix up the departments. So we don't wanna have everybody from one major. We try to get people from diverse majors. So if you find a faculty member from a major that's never had a fellow, you have a higher chance of getting accepted. I'll just say that. Okay, and this um, fellow wanted some garden materials. And so they put in, you can have up to $500 allocated for those materials. So they put in these detailed descriptions and the total is under the 5,200 max. All right, and these agreement forms, you need to have filled out and you need to make sure they're turned in by the March 1st deadline, right? Say your community partner doesn't turn in their form, your application is incomplete. So you, you're gonna need to follow up with them. Okay. Okay, you share the links with the individuals, great. All right, and so here are the information sessions that are coming up. This is basically an information session, but this is more geared toward faculty. Um, for students, there are three opportunities, December 3rd from 11, 10 to 11, January 14th from 10 to 11, and January 28th from 12 to 1. These are all over Zoom. I'm gonna be advertising a lot for these and students have to pre-register using a Google form, and then I'll send them the Zoom link. Students have to attend an information session and able to be able to, to apply for the fellowship. So they can't just randomly apply out of nowhere um, because probably their application will get rejected anyway. So we want to guide the students through the application process and give them help. Um, and I have a flyer um, that I circulated on the faculty official email list with this information and with the Google form sign up link. So this is the application timeline right now. We're about to be in the information session time. Then applications are due March 1st. The fellows are selected soon after that and start their sort of spring hours. And then they have their summer hours um, start right after the spring semester ends. So if you have further questions, you can always email me at my um, personal email address or the sustainability office address, sustain at unca.edu. Um, there's a ton of information on the McCullough website. Um, so I also encourage you to check that out and send your students there. Uh, so I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to actually share again with the past fellows website. So I want to just scroll through so you can see um, who's had fellow, who's, who have our fellows been? And I'm going to go kind of fast, but this is the website that I encourage you to look at. You can see the titles of the projects and the kinds of things that they did and who the faculty advisors were and who the partners were. 
you don't want to repeat something that's already been done. You want to try to find something new. So 2019, we have the energy one. A riverside shrub, very specific with the botans. Lichens. Electric vehicles. You can see the variety. Um, and this was interesting about sustainable housing. Okay, 2018. Mussels. <laughs> Uh, this was an art one about um, climate change and art. Birds of the Greenway. Uh, this was about environmental justice kind of work. Hellbenders. Then 2017 stormwater, native plants. Um, this is really interesting working with the city on our Edible Mile, Edible Greenway project, Dylan. Chestnut, the um, American Chestnut Foundation is based right here in Asheville. So that was that was a cool partnership. Oh, shout out to Jonathan Horton, who's on this call. Um, another art project working with um, public art downtown. And then um, community gardens, this was Bountiful Cities. Another salamander project. This was an econ project, willingness to pay. And then here was my student, uh, Julia, about food security. So that, it, that gives you an overview of the wide range of topics that, that folks could um, apply for. So now I'd just like to open it up for questions. Any questions that anybody has? Dun, dun, dun. Can't have been crystal clear. Or if you have an idea of a project and you wanna kind of bounce that around, I do have a question. Maybe it's on the website about the McCulloughs and why they set this up. Is that is that information like what was behind the creation of this? Because people have asked me that and I don't know. You know, I'm not sure it's fully explained on the website. That's a good question. Um, the the McCullough family is very environmentally conscious and very, very they care a lot. And, th and that's why. Um, so they had served on some boards um, of of environmental organizations in Asheville. And they just wanted to have some kind of legacy, um, sort of environmental conservation legacy. And this is what they decided to do. So um, we're so grateful to them. And um, yeah, it was sort of to memorialize their, their family this way. Um, and so they did set strict parameters about how, how um, you know, how the money's used and how the fellows are, are selected um, and they're involved. And we have a board, we have a selection board. Um, and, and so they're still very involved and, and they care a lot. Um, and Leslie Cass, who's the daughter of, um, of Mr. McCullough, um, she, uh, she's involved with a selection committee and very, and she um, is, is a guest speaker in our fall class too. So, um, and she has served on the board of UNC Asheville too. <laughs> so, um, so there's lots of connections. And, um, and I do wanna say this is so unique. It's really amazing for our students that they could do something like this it usually happens in grad school. It's not usual that you'd have an applied project like this with a faculty mentor and get paid to do it as an undergrad. And we, I really try to cultivate you as a scholar. So in the fall, we do a lot on writing and presentation and you do need to submit a paper for the undergrad journal and present. So then that goes on your resume and it's so, it's so great. So. Other comments or questions? I will, okay, I'm gonna um, say a little bit about campus, right? So so it's, UNC Asheville cannot be the community partner, right? Because we're already on campus, we can't partner with ourselves. So some people have asked those questions. Now, NEMAC is in a, NEMAC, um, the National Environmental Modeling and Analysis Center, I think, which does climate change um, analysis is based on campus, but is sort of a, a separate from campus. So there, that would be an okay partner. So, um, so it has to be a question that's a little bit broader than campus, or you have to show how it could apply, like to the greater world or um, to sustainability in Buncombe County. So keep that in mind. Anything else? Was it that clear?
I feel like Annalisa might have a question. Actually, I can't think of any right now, but if I um, think of something later, is that something we can email you about? You bet. So part of my job is helping the applicants through the process. And so I just wanna encourage um, faculty and students that if you're interested, it's better to contact me sooner rather than later. Um, because I, if I know that you have a project in mind, I can help you move it along. Or for example, with this past year, um, I knew a student had an interest area, but couldn't think of a community partner. And she ended up, and I had a community partner in mind, the Biltmore Estate. So she ended up connecting with the Biltmore and um, did a project with them, which was great because they were a new, a new partner. So don't hesitate, be, you know, be a little assertive and, um, and ask. And then you want to draft your proposal and run it by probably me and your faculty advisor, um, again, earlier rather than later. I think the break gives us a really nice time to be working on this because we can, we can relax a little bit and have the time to think about it and sit on it for a while. Um, so you can work on editing your proposal. I would say your proposal probably needs to be edited at least three times before you submit it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually um, looking to work with Dr. Horton with the carbon sequestration work. So I think that is a great project. Yeah. Good idea. Hi. Hi, thanks for coming. Oh, uh, yes. Um, I was wondering if a student, so we have um, in our department a senior uh, capstones. Usually students propose projects uh, in capstone one. And then it continues on into the capstone two, where most of the implementation is. So uh, is there any type of uh, concerns about double dipping? There's not much concern about double dipping. <laughs> I think double dipping is OK, um, but people have to be totally transparent about it and say, say what's happening and be clear about who's going to, like, who's the instructor of record or who's, you know, what is counting for what? But as long as they fill, fulfill their McCullough Fellow responsibilities, um, if it also, like say, um, you know, environmental studies requires you to do an internship or a research project, then they also have to enroll in that course for environmental studies. And that's on the student to organize that. But if, if it kind of dovetails, I don't see any problem with that. Um, similarly to the Community Engaged Scholar, might as well talk about that for a minute. So the Key Center has this Community Engaged Scholar program where students have to do a community identified um, applied service learning project. So if a student wanted to pursue that, they'd have to get it approved through the key center ahead of time and attend a workshop ahead of time before they even do the McCullough. So students can accomplish these things, but they have to be organized. But I, I don't see any problem. If it's a highly motivated student who has their ducks in a row and it's an applied research project that meets the major and the Institute, it's okay. And also Thanks. the timing. Yeah, sure. I don't know when are you said this part one part and then another part. What semesters are is that usually happening? Uh oh, still muted. Every, every semester we have um, the sequence starting. So like right now, I'm doing the fall. Um, 480, which is right now proposal stage. And then I would be doing the capstone in the spring, but then another colleague in the spring will be doing the 480 and will be with the graduating class for, you know, the fall of, of 2021. So I'm right now, I have the spring 2021 and another colleague will have the fall, the sequence for the fall and so on. I'll, I'm, I'm always on until I'm not chair, no longer chair. I'm always on the fall spring sequence. Okay. So the only possible glitch would be the timing. So it, the students have to follow the McCullough schedule. Um, so the, and this is, this is another pitfall that students all, often have that the project is too big. So it has to be something that needs to have a bounded question that's answerable within the summer, right? You have to launch the program, collect your data, and have some results by the fall semester starting. Because you all know things get hectic and then time gets away and the students haven't written their paper yet. <laughs> so that's my job to keep them on track so that um, there's a final product, that something gets done. And so another question. Then. Yeah, sure. Instead of it, 
instead of the students, I mean, that's one possibility that the students would be involved with the um, McCullough Institute. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking at, you've got a whole list of partners mm -hmm. and those partners are always looking for something that I think my senior projects, my seniors would like to do for a senior project. Oh, so great. is there some room that way? Well, I think Corey would be good. Yeah, uh, so in? you could come to the the Key Center also, I think is aware of the list Allison has, and then we have other community partners too. Um, similarly with the Community Engaged Scholar Program, students have to take two service learning designated courses. So it is also something that's ideal to have a junior um, at the at the oldest, a junior level student um, really get into. But if you're just looking for a community partner, ideas or contacts, I would be happy to talk to you about that more, Moretta, just to connect you because that's part of the key center, you know, that um, just connecting people with partners and they can be people that other faculty have worked with um, in other departments or even new new ones, you know, but I'd be happy to talk to you about that anytime, myself or Kate Johnson. Okay. Great, that worked out. Thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah, that, that worked out great. And I'm also happy, but I'm, I know the environmental groups a little bit better. Um, and I think Corey has a, a broader um, pool of organizations. Yeah, but we work together. So contact both of us. Uh, you both are going to be invited to a computer science department. That's okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Um, okay. Any last questions? I feel like maybe we cover the bases. I don't know. I just have a comment just that I love how the projects have all been so different. I, I, you know, I assumed when I first heard about this, that um, it would be really along the lines of just not just environmental science, but that they would all be environmental science. Um, and it, it's really cool. I feel like it speaks to the liberal arts here that they're, they're all so different and they're from such different departments. It's, it's inspiring. Thank you for noting that. And that's the selection committee looks for that. So again, I will say that um, if you're from a major that has not been represented yet, you have a you have a better chance. <laughs> so, or if you have, say, you're a double major or you have a minor, you'll want to talk that up in your proposal, saying how well-rounded you are and um, and and all those kinds of things. Um, I see other people that are lurking. Does do does anybody want to put a question in the chat or? Have I answered all the questions? Just like last. <laughs> I know, I know, because you know it. <laughs> all right, well, this is the last call. Well, I will say this, Allison. Uh, yep. I did notice a couple of your community partners included Carolina Mountain Club and Mountain True. Mm -hmm. um, we do have the historical records for both of those organizations in the archives. So if there's, you know, thinking creatively, if people wanted to dig into that with some of the projects, Ashley and I'd be happy to talk with them. I love that. Something more archival, maybe someone from a humanities major, that would be something new and different. So um, thanks for that idea. We do, I encourage ideas because if I have the idea, then I can kind of promote it a little bit. So, I wish I had done something like that, um, especially since I was a history major and an environmental studies minor. That would have been cool. Yeah, this would have been perfect for you. But it was just starting, you know, when you were leaving, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Any any wrap up? I want to thank you all for taking the time. And I'm, I'm available anytime for future questions, including over the break. Oh, I, I do have one. Is it only for, because it says fellows, is it only for a single student? Can it be a group project? Only for a single student. Good question. The first year there were some group projects. It didn't work out that well. So now we're just doing, um, we, we select four to five fellows a year. That's it. And each has to have a distinct project. I mean, they could be working on a project with a community partner that's a bigger project, but the, the, there's one point of contact, one fellow who gets the honorarium. That's, that's it. Thank Good you. question. Yeah. Anything else? Well, I want to thank Jean and Ashley for continuing this uh, program series. It's really great. And for hosting. 
Um, and I want to thank all of you for taking the time and um, it's been great. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, Allison. Okay. Thanks, Allison. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Be safe. Yep. You too. <laughs> Allison, you're still invited to my department meeting. <laughs> just, send me the, just send me the invite. I'll come. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Bye. Take care. I'll take care.